Let us rise for our processional carol, O come, all ye faithful. Amen. You may be seated. Good evening. And Merry Christmas to one and all. Welcome to the United Church of Phelps on this holy and sacred night as we come together to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the newborn King. We are glad that you are here. Officiating with me tonight is the Reverend Carl Warrington, a minister member of the Presbytery of Geneva, an attendee of this congregation. And on behalf of both of us, we are glad that you are here to celebrate with us tonight. Let us join now our voices in the gathering words. Please respond with the bold print. Welcome tonight to a celebration like no other. This is the night of the Holy Earth. Let the love of Jesus be born in your hearts and spirits. Born in our hearts, receive us in God. Rejoice, good friends. The good news is here. Christ our Savior is born. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Tonight we light all the candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope. The second candle is peace. The third candle is joy. And the fourth candle is love. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let us pray. O God of hope, peace, joy, and love, as Mary and Joseph welcome you into the world, now help us welcome you into our lives. Give us courage to hope, strength to seek peace, fill our spirits with joy, and our hearts with love. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord of all. Amen. Dear friends, Christ came so that our sins may be forgiven and so that we may be saved through Christ. In full confidence that Christ stands ready to hear, accept, and forgive our sins, let us make our confession. Let us pray. Lord, we are so excited. Christmas Eve is here. We are impatient to hear the whole story. Slow us down again, Lord as we hear Mary say yes to God's good news. Help us to remember that God continually calls us to be those who will bear the good news to those in need. Forgive us when we forget to do that. Heal our wounds and bind up our spirits. Enable us to go into your world, offering our lives, our gifts, our talents for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? The angel said, Do not be afraid. Nothing is impossible with God. In God's boundless love, we are forgiven. Amen.
Our first reading tonight, as we enter into the Christmas story, comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Let us sing together, O come, O come, Emmanuel. now read from Isaiah 1 through 11, 1 through 4a and 6 through 9. Listen for God's word. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We move to the Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. 
and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Let us sing, What Child Is This? from Luke 2, 1 through 7. Listen for God's word. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world shall be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was a descendant from the house of the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there is no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heavens and on earth. Peace among those whom he favors. Let us sing. Hark the herald. Angels sing. Oh! 
When the angels had left and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Let us come singing, Angels We Have Heard on High. greater gift we receive than the gift of God's own child. Child, a child, who is our light and our salvation? We who have received so much are called to join the shepherds in sharing our joy. We are challenged to join the Magi in offering our gifts to the Christ child. Come, let us give out of abundance. Let us receive our Christmas offering.
pray our blessing together. Light, light, and love of love, shine through our hearts, that the world may be filled with your light and be touched by your love. Join our hearts the joy of the angels and shepherds as we offer you our deepest gratitude for the blessings of your Son, the Prince of Peace. Amen.
thank you to our music coordinator for bringing all this music together tonight. Thank you, Kay, and all who have played and, and sang. We appreciate that very much. One of my favorite animated movies this time of year is Charlie Brown's Christmas, much to my wife's disappointment. I, I love Snoopy decorating his doghouse, Charlie Brown picking out that scrawny little tree. I even love the different dances that they all do when Schroeder plays his piano. But it's not really Christmas until Charlie Brown shouts, is there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? And then Linus takes center stage, the lights go low, the spotlight goes on him, and he recites the Christmas story. And when Linus finishes, he simply says, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. It's the best Christmas sermon ever preached. He simply was retelling and reminding Charlie Brown why we do all that we do in the month of December in the first place. And every year, if we have ears to hear, it reminds us too. You know, some might wonder why we come here each Christmas Eve, some of us twice in one day this year. The event we're celebrating happened some 2,000 years ago. The baby whose birth we're celebrating hasn't been a baby for a very long time. And yet every year we gather to hear the same story, light the same candles, and sing the same carols. And I think part of the reason is that like Charlie Brown needing Linus, we need the reminder. That can feel especially true when the light in the world seems dim so often. For some this year, it hasn't been a year that you had hoped for. The world seems in some big ways broken. Communities, even our own, struggle with things like drugs and violence. Our very country feels for many like a harder and more unkind place, and we cry out for peace and love to reign. We want to wave bye-bye to 2017. Yet before we can get to New Year's Eve and on to New Year's Day and into 2018, we have to go through Christmas, and that's good news. Because for these near 2,000 years, no matter what the year has brought, good or bad, this yearly reminder of God's love has come in the literal darkest of days. The real meaning of Christmas, the one that Linus proclaimed to Charlie Brown, is indeed the birth of the Christ child. And the amazing part is that we believe that by Christ's birth, God chose to not just be the creator of the world, but to be a part of this world in a new way. We believe that God became one of us. In other words, Christmas is about God loving us so much that God chose to participate in this world. Christmas is about us not being alone anymore. No matter what else happens, nothing is able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's the first part of the Christmas story. One that was written down in the scriptures centuries ago. But the story doesn't end there. For you see, if Christmas is about God's participation in this world, then it's also about our participation in what God is doing now. The story that we read tells us that Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and later on the wise men, they all said yes they said yes to being a part of the story. And now each of us has the choice to be a part of the Christmas story. Each year we close another chapter of this story that we are writing with God. And on Christmas Eve we get to choose to start writing 
a new one. In a real way, that's what all these candles that we are about to light in a moment are really all about. At the beginning of the service, we lit the Christ candle on the wreath, proclaiming Christ's birth, proclaiming God's participation with us. And as we end the service, we will spread the light from candle to candle, one to another. And as we hold it up and sing Silent Night, we will proclaim that we are willing to be a part of the Christmas story this year. And not just tonight, not just tomorrow, but every day. One of the last scenes in Charlie Brown's Christmas comes when the whole gang gathers around that Charlie Brown tree and they begin to string the lights and they hang the ornaments and then they wrap it in the warmth of Linus's blankie. And when they do, that tree, it's transformed. It's beautiful. And it's a beautiful symbol of the power of community. The light that each of us holds tonight may not seem like a whole lot all on its own. But friends, together it's brilliant. And just like Charlie Brown's tree was transformed by the participation of many, this world can be changed and made beautiful too. And the more of us who decide to be a part of that work, the more of us who choose to participate in what God is doing in this world, the more likely and quickly that change will be. <coughs> Scripture tells us that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. And that's true. But tonight... At the end of this service, each of us will blow out our candles and we will step back into that world. So when you do, you will make an important choice. Will you let that light die out? Or will you instead take it into your heart and carry it with you everywhere that you go? In choosing to carry it with you, you will have given this world the greatest gift that you could ever give. And you will have joined this Christmas story that God began for us all those centuries ago. And together, our light will shine in the darkness. And the darkness will never overcome it. And it will indeed be a very Merry Christmas. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Lord, we greet you this happy night, for you have been at work in our world throughout all time. You made all things and call them good. You claimed your people Israel, you freed them from the bondage of Egypt and journeyed with them to the wilderness, to the promised land. You sent prophets to call your people back to you. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your son Jesus, Emmanuel, born the king of angels, your word in flesh appearing. He was one of us and lived with us, giving up all his glory for our sake to make us whole. And yet you raised him up again to overcome the power of death and live a new life. Still we wait for the day when we too will share the fullness of life in him and with him. And so with the faithful of all the ages, we sing the praise and glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, the God of hosts, all praise be given. All your glory fills the earth. All your power fills the heavens. Blessed is the one who came, bringing love and light divine. Blessed is the king who comes in the bread and wine. Glory of the king of the city. And so, O oh God, come among us tonight. Show us your presence in this bread and this cup. And make this bread that we break and this cup that we bless the body and blood of Christ. And by your Holy Spirit, unite us with Christ and all who share in this feast, just as you send us out to be his presence in and for your world. Give us courage to be your people, to show your justice, grace, mercy, peace, and love, and to be a part of your transformation of our world until the day when the baby whose birth we celebrate tonight comes again in peace. And we sing your praise and glory forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as Give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not from temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When Jesus came before his disciples on the night that he was betrayed, after giving thanks and praise, he said to his disciples, This is my body broken for you and for all people. Whenever you take up this bread, remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take a drink. This is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. Those assisting with union, please come forward at this time. Please just let Carl or I know 
and we will provide that for you. Come and participate in this feast.
Let us pray. Heavenly and gracious God, as we go out into the darkness, as we go out into the world where there is tumult, where there are challenges, where there are things that we may not like, we ask you, Heavenly Father, and we give you thanks for this great light in Jesus Christ. We ask you that you bless us each and every step of the way, giving us the courage and the strength, and always letting us know that there is a light at the end of each dark tunnel. Amen. And praise God. Let us sing joy to the world. congregation's choir here at the United Church of Phelps. You are always welcome. We worship at 1050 on Sunday mornings. On behalf of this church family, I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. And now as you go forth, go with hope and peace and love and joy in your hearts as you seek to serve God and love your neighbor in all that you do. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.